Hi. Okay, so I want to tell you about something that's happened just like in the last couple of days. Um, a lot like everyone else, uh, this is COVID era and me and my boyfriend are working from home. We're teachers, so we teach online and we've had a pretty full schedule. My child is eight years old and she's with us. We are we are in a different country from where we're originally working and living in. And because uh, we're supposed to be working and living in China, but we're now in Thailand and we've been here for six months because we just got shut out and we couldn't get back and we went on a break here. Okay. So we've been working, me and my boyfriend, we've been working online and my child has been just at home. And she's got both of us, which is nice. And she's got no shortage of technological entertainment and stimulation. Okay, she's got tablets, she's got, she has an iPad, and sometimes she's my little Android tablet. And she's got all kinds of games and things that she's been working on. She plays Minecraft, she plays Roblox with my boyfriend even sometimes, she plays Roblox with other people. Uh, she's building things, she's drawing things, she's, she's experimenting with different games because she spent quite a lot of her, her up, she's eight now, so her, a lot of her small years in China, she picked up Chinese language. So she can speak Chinese language pretty well, but she can't really read it or write, write it. Okay. Anyway, um, so I've been trying to get in some basic maths lessons with her and English lessons and uh, basically reading and writing, a bit of writing practice so that you know her handwriting is legible by the time she gets back to school proper. Yeah, and so that's what we've been doing. I've been doing a bit bits and pieces here and there. It is not structured. It is not regular. Sometimes by the time I'm finished working and I think, oh, I should teach my child something, I'm, I'm, I'm finished. Uh, my my energy, my communicative energy is zilch for the day. And my child's also like, huh? Why do you, what are we going to do? You know, so it just it doesn't feel like it fits the, the flow of the day to kind of introduce something like... Yeah. Anyway, so I get to maths the other day. Okay, I get to maths the other day. And I'm preparing what I've got to do. Um, um, I'm readying the app. We, we use a couple of apps. I'm reading the one app that we're going to be using. We're doing odd and even numbers that day. She's in second grade, okay? Odd and even numbers that day. And my child's watching me doing this. And she looks at me like she's got to tell me something. She's got some news to deliver. She, she's got some maybe bad news to deliver, like, you know, something she's... she's it's resting on her heart. She has to inform me. And I'm like, oh, what's wrong, babe? She goes, Mom, I'm not good at maths. I'm not good at maths. And I'm like, okay, well, how do you know? And she goes, well, my, my teacher told me in when I was in first grade. Her teacher told you you were bad at maths in the first grade. Okay. Now, if I don't counter this, if she just stayed with us and I didn't counter this, where would this thought of hers take her? If she internalized that and took it in and that became part of her mental makeup, of who she thought she was, what she thought she was capable of. Where would this take her? And what would her options be later on? What would she allow her options to be later on? What mental blockages would start to form and crystallize if I didn't counter this? Because I'm asking this as a hypothetical question because I did counter this take my roles I try to take my role as seriously as I can 
And I, I, I did come to this. I sat her down and I, I, I told her that, babe, your first grade teacher knows next to nothing about you. Your first grade teacher is under the assumption that you are just like all the other kids in your class. Now, I'm going to preface this. Uh, she, since she was two years old, she's grown up in China. And because I was working full time, I hired nannies, a, a, a local nanny, and almost like next to none of them could speak English at all. They were just, I just got a really kind vibe from them. So I was like, fine, come on in. And then the way we communicated was through Baidu Translate on the phone. I'm not joking, this is what I did. And my Chinese is like, whew, whew. I just, you know, I'm working, I've got like a different focus. So, um, so she had a lot of chill time at home. She had a lot of play time at home. She had paints, she had books. I, I would, did not have the money to go looking for new books all the time, but I would make it my uh, extra, extra work hobby to be always looking out for hardback books or physical books that she could have to hand on the shelves to read. And I made it my business to hunt and buy these, hunt these books down and buy them from different people all, all, all over the place. It was all second hand. So she had loads of books. She did painting. She did drawing. She watched YouTube videos. She watched a lot of cartoons. She watched a cartoon that was all in Russian. I have not taken to her, her to one Russian lesson to date. She has not studied Russian, but there was a cartoon called Masha Yimishka, which is a Russian cartoon about a little girl and a bear. She loved this from like day one, loved this and would watch it every day. Who knows what she's learning from it, but I feel like I got an extremely good vibe from this, this cartoon. It's very high quality. And it was things like this. She just seemed to zoom in on certain things. And I just thought when I read this, expression on her face of complete absorption she she gets a certain and you can probably recognize it in, in kids that you know or kids of your own there's an expression they get on their faces of, of complete and utter absorption with something and whenever i see that i'm like i've got to live well alone i've got to i've got to step back and walk away you know, I've got to, I've got to not freaking interrupt. No matter what I think, I have to teach her. How do I know? It's ultimately going to be more important than what she's picking up at that particular point. If it's something absolutely trashy and that you can see, like, whoa, no, that's gross. No, 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 pull that kid out of there. Sure, fine. But if it's something that you couldn't really gauge, or maybe you get a vibe that there's something in this, but I can't exactly tell what what it will lead to, how will it benefit them ultimately, but you get a good vibe about it. Maybe it sounds like hippie trash, I don't know, maybe I am, I'm, I could well be one. But that look of absorption has, as soon as I see that, I just leave well alone. I let her do it, I let her follow her train of thought as far as it can, as far as regular life will allow. Because if you think about it, how often in regular life are you allowed to just follow your train of thought until it ends, until it totally tapers off? I mean, regular life as an adult, things come at you all the time, an alarm goes, you've got to do this, the, the clock of the day, the schedule, it just doesn't allow for you to just sit and think things out until you're you're on the other side. Where you? How many of us actually even get, we don't, unless you have like a meditative retreat somewhere or you're allowed, you're permitted with your time to go on holiday somewhere. And not many of us, not many of us in the world at the moment can really do that. Or maybe now that we're in COVID, yeah, yeah, you're forced to. But like in regular life, it doesn't really happen. So I felt that this is really important for me to allow her to do this, to follow her train of thought to if she's deep in something I feel the worst thing I can do is is say to her but hey baby stop doing that let's do some I don't know maths calculations or something like God forbid if she is into something I just let her do it 
and she'll probably, you know, she, she'll eventually get through it, and then I can maybe suggest something else, but this is what I've been doing with her. So, she's had it since two years old, she's been in China, she's had the nannies, she's drawing, uh, playing, lots of playing with little toys, whatever, um, books, uh, apps, tablet apps, endless, lots of cartoons, pretty much whatever she wants on YouTube if we're outside the country and we have a VPN or whatever. But, yeah, so she's kind of had like a free reign, free range, free range child, free range chicken, free range child. And I haven't, re I haven't plugged her into any extra lessons. I haven't plugged her into, I think I, I, I took her to a ukulele, a ukulele lesson once or twice. That went okay. I think maybe four times, but she was like, ah, oh, she was so distracted, so I didn't force it. And I've just started taking her, taking her to voice lessons recently. She likes that. But, oh, she did roller skating lessons one time. She liked that too. But to push her to do something endlessly for months and months and months, when I can see she's just like, uh, I fit. How, how, ultimately, how do I know that what I'm pushing is going to benefit her in the long run? How do I know that? I don't. Maybe other people around me are doing this, but how, I mean, do they know ultimately what these skills are going to teach them ultimately versus what the kid finds themselves drawn to? And I'm not pushing general crap. I'm not pushing general crap. I'm, uh, what I mean is anything where you feel, wow, this looks or feels, there's something in it, but I can't, how do I map? How do I... How would I explain to other people what this is worth to my child and what is, where it's going to get them in the future? And then a lot of people, because they can't put their finger on it or they can't explain it or they can't put words into what... I don't know how, how my child is going to use this in the future. They just discount it. Okay, because I can't explain it, I don't know, I'd rather just go with something that's a sure bet, like, I don't know, STEM stem subject or i don't know let's take you to learn i don't know calligraphy or let's take basically it seems that there's a there's an extreme bias towards putting a child's attention and focus into a lesson that's guided by another person a teacher a person of some kind of educational authority in some area a lot of people, a lot of parents seem to be terrified, abjectly terrified of just allowing their child freewheeling time to self-direct their own activities and what they choose to do. And it's understandable because I, 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 do, I do see why you're afraid for the future, you're afraid that your child's not going to have the skills to deal with what's going on in the future. But here's the thing. We don't know what's going to go on in the future. Things have been changing. And they've been changing fast. They change every year. The jobs that were touted as the good, solid jobs to have 10 years ago, even 5 years ago, 10, let's just say 10 years ago, doctors, lawyers, engineers, all, all the usual things, Yes, those are good jobs, but will we need as many applicants for those particular jobs, even in 15 years' time, when apps and AI software and algorithms are pretty much going to be used? They're taking over these jobs, and they're taking over because why would you pay a person to do something who also has... I mean, when you hire a person, you also hire human error. They may try to do the best they can, but there's also that margin for human error. Why would you hire someone when you can use an app, AI, algorithm, or software that makes no mistakes and it's so much cheaper? You buy it one time and then it works for how long? Why would you hire the person? Okay, so, so this is what I'm thinking. We don't know where the future is going to take us. We don't know what the future is going to 
maybe we have some idea, like environmental sciences. Oh. There's a few, there's a few sectors that are worth focusing on. But generally speaking, what has worked before is not necessarily going to work into the future. What has always ensured a child's employment prospects in the past does not guarantee the same thing in the future. In fact, now what often there are now new jobs and new occupations that people can do to support themselves. There's a, a new one, totally new one, which is a internet influencer, right? Where they they film what they're doing and they go out to different places and they explain or critique or you know to, maybe this is, <laughs> but yes. And then there's delivery drivers. The 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 huge mountain of delivery drivers just in China alone. Online online applications, maybe online software application and programming. Even playing games. I used to teach a student that told me his main form of income was playing games under the avatar or the name of other people. Other people would hire him to go and play a game for them because he was good at it and he could hire up their score, he could bump up their score so that they would look good for their friends. So you have people in society who are competing with each other and what they do is they couldn't be bothered to like put in time and get good at a game so they go and hire another guy to go do it. And this was his, this kid's pocket money, he was 16 years old and he could almost fully support himself by playing games so you know when when somebody says to you now no 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 your kids playing too many games you know you can't that's not a viable income there's there's no jobs where a child can you know make money playing games are you freaking kidding like more and more and more the game sector games graphics games programming even just maybe troubleshooting troubleshooting you find the problems or like the, this area is is not getting smaller it's exploding so when people say, oh, there's this, there's no future in games, are you serious? You are lying. Okay, so the entertainment sector is one sector that, that's a, that's a big area that you should, should not be, should not be sneezed at, should not be overlooked. Okay, so there's the environmental sector, there's the education, no, yeah, always education. And then there's the entertainment sector, especially games. Do not fob off games. Don't fob off games. Anyway, so getting back to my, my main point, so yeah, I'm going to go back to talking about my daughter. So my daughter said, my, Mom, I'm not good at maths. And I said to her, Babe, your teacher doesn't know you. She's known you for like maybe under four months because my child just started attending the school that she's attending with a whole bunch of other Chinese kids, probably like two months late even. And now all the other Chinese kids in her class have been, I'm guessing, probably, and they do do this. In China, China mainland, uh, the average parent is being a good parent by sending their little three-year-old to classes where they begin to study the basic Hanza, which is the Chinese characters, and maybe the alphabet, English alphabet, and basic words, and then also basic maths too. And this is from three years old. So this is the chi average Chinese kid's background before they even just enter primary school, first grade. Okay, so that's probably the rest of her class. And she comes in, she hasn't, she hasn't had any maths. She hasn't had any, any of this sort of academic focus stuff. I haven't focused on this at all. I figured, hey, we'll do it later. It'll come later. You know, don't worry about that. Not focused on it at all. And so her teacher sees what she can do in class and obviously she's not as good at the others she's probably bottom of the class sure thing and her teacher tells her you're not good at maths her teacher doesn't know her her teacher hasn't seen her life her teacher doesn't know what kind of a cultural background she's from i don't even know if we have a culture we're very freewheeling <laughs> so this is the thing i want to emphasize how damaging it can be when you 
tell someone, I'm not even I'm not even talking about little babies or children. I'm talking about anyone who's starting something for the first time or starting it for the first few months. When you tell them, you look at what they're doing and you just go, you're not good at this, are you? It's awful. How damaging that can be. Sure, sometimes people start to study something and they've been doing it for a few months or maybe a year or something and they just don't have the aptitude or they don't have the goods, you know, they don't have the mental background or makeup or pathways there to help them get on with this thing. Okay, sure, understanding, maybe you're not so great at it, maybe you could look at doing something else, but someone who is fresh to something, fresh and new and trying it for the first time, it is damaging to tell them that they're just not good at it. It is extremely damaging because that, that, that's, especially for a young child, that, that's like the building blocks of their self-esteem, of what they think they can do, their confidence, what they, what they think they're capable of. And it can be extremely damaging for them to carry that with them. I mean, think about it, right? The average person who grows up when was the last time you did a painting? Just a painting or a drawing, just because you felt like it. Maybe you felt like it and you picked up the pen and you, and you started to do something. And then something came along in your head, a little voice, or maybe something somebody said from before, like, look, it, it's not really working. And you just, you put the pen down and you go on with your life and you go and do something else. How often does that happen? It happens all the time, doesn't it? How many artists, how many writers, how many maybe even mathematicians, scientists, whoever, never made it there because they were shot down so young and so early? Or they were just shot down because they weren't making enough prog progress in the time that was expected. You see, the thing about intelligence is that I mean, we're still trying to understand how it works. So sometimes you'll have a person who's super fast, super sharp, absorbs something really quickly and is able to use the, those concepts and apply them. And then you have another person who maybe is also quite sharp, but it takes them time to get into something. It takes them time and maybe thinking something over so that it goes in deep you know they're slow burn learners slow burn learners and basically if you had to look at the abilities of the fast learner and then like the slow burning learner at the end of a year you might even find that the slow burner one is going further because he's taking it taking it in deeper see what i mean i mean oh, how many times have you heard of a a person like 40 years old, 50 years old, who's who's only getting to grips with what they're good at or, or something that they, they'd really like to get into seriously for the rest of their life because they were just learning how to survive or they were learning about what they weren't good at or what what was not working for them or what, what was just, you know, just butting your head against a brick wall. You know, Einstein only really got cracking later on in life. All these like, different business owners, they really get, got, got, got into things late. I think we need to allow for this. What seems to not be the thing at all is every... What seems to be the thing is that everyone's in such a rush. Such a rush. And I, we're rushing our kids. We're hurrying them along, rushing them on, herding them into all kinds of things. Their own freewheeling time means nothing. Time in a classroom being directed by another person seems to trump everything. Why? Why? Because they guarantee higher math scores or something? How long? How do you know that your child is concentrating that whole time? How, how do you know how much they're daydreaming out the window? And then would you even try and control that? Would you try and get them... Actually, this has been actually invented, a, a pair of glasses that measures when they're looking at something or when they're daydreaming or, or looking away. Do we want this? Okay, so basically coming back to it, 
I, I explain to my child that she needs to throw this thought away. This thought that she's just not good at something. She's in grade one. She's just beginning. She's just getting going. Maths can be extremely interesting and actually fun and almost like a puzzle when you get into it and you're not afraid of it. And I think our traditional teaching up until now is that people like like hens in a chicken coop or like basically like animals all in a cage. You want them to develop at a certain time to move on to the to the, to the next stage. This is in what is it? Industrial era. This is industrial era education. We don't need to be doing this anymore. In fact, we have no idea where the future is taking us. We don't know what skills will be required. We don't know what kind of intelligence will be needed. And if you think about it, there's a whole bunch of jobs out there requiring stem cell subjects, so science, technology, engineering, and maths, where do we need the whole volume of people to be all those kinds of people? I mean, if there's a lot of algorithms, robots, and AI out there that, that, that can be doing these jobs, does that mean there's going to be more jobs for us to do that as imperfect human beings? I don't know, in my mind, a robot is a better robot than a human is. Okay, so what does that leave for the rest of us? How much of outside the box thinking have we been practicing? How much of game theory have we been practicing? How much split second decision making have we been practicing? Or, or helping them, allowing our kids to, to, to practice? Basically, we don't know where we're going. But there's no guarantee. We have no guarantee. And, and in fact, I would say, I would guess the future is definitely not going to be like the past, but we're training our kids for positions of the past. How about we allow them to start looking at what really sets them alight in their minds? When you see that, when you see them go, whoa, wow, and they really start to get in something, that's it. That's the beginning. That's the beginning there.